Dr. Brian Erstad has had an extraordinary career with a passion for critical care medicine. His work has had an emphasis on patient safety and related outcomes research. He has authored more than 300 peer-reviewed articles, monographs, and book chapters. Dr. Erstad's sustained contributions concerning patient safety and the medication use process have greatly contributed to enhanced medication use and serve as critical examples for continued improvement of patient outcomes. I'd like to begin by thanking the APHG Foundation for supporting the Pinnacle Awards. Um, my first start into uh, the area of, of patient safety, medication safety, began when I uh, got my PharmD degree. Uh, I'd actually worked for eight or nine years in hospital settings prior to getting my PharmD degree, but I think where I really started to perform some research was uh, when I became a clinical assistant professor here at the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy. That was more than 30 years ago. Time goes quickly. Um, I actually began with some projects um, regarding continuous infusions of medications and as involved in both local and, and uh, uh, multi-center, a couple of multi-center studies, and those ended up being published. But where I really uh, um, got into the area of medication safety and adverse drug events was when um, I performed a, a study involving direct observation um, of medication errors and adverse drug events um, shortly, relatively quickly after becoming a, a faculty member. Um, direct observation approaches to detecting errors is uh, very difficult to do. Um, we patterned our studies after some of the work of, of Ken Barker uh, from Auburn, who had really piloted this, this uh, method of detecting medication errors um, in skilled nursing facilities and and uh, less acute care type of, of, of facilities. And so uh, Ken Barker, again, deserves a lot of the credit for, for using this approach. But the bottom line is we know that there's a lot of, of uh, underreporting of medication errors using the traditional voluntary reporting system. And so uh, we decided to take this other approach to find out uh, about the, the rate of medication errors, the types of errors, et cetera. And so basically we had uh, trained individuals um, pretty much sitting at the bedside and recording medication errors and adverse drug events. As you could imagine, these are extremely difficult studies to do. We needed all sorts of permissions. And, but we ended up with uh, performing these studies, not only in, in adult intensive care unit, but also in pediatric intensive care unit. We ended up doing it in an emergency medicine setting. And so, uh, and we basically extended the work of, of Ken Barker and took this into more acute care type settings. And it actually allowed us um, to make a number of recommendations back to the hospital at the time in terms of things that could be done to improve um, the medication use process. And then we published the findings. of All of the work that we did in these different settings, we published because we wanted others to learn from our, from our efforts. And so these were all published in, in uh, uh, peer-reviewed journals. But I'd like to thank some of the people who were involved in those early studies. And uh, beginning with uh, Brian Kopp, who was uh, one of my specialty residents at the time. And, and uh, I still actually have a close relationship with, professional relationship with Dr. Kopp because he works at our academic medical center here. He's now the program director for the critical care residency. He took that over from me. Uh, Michelle Allen, uh, again, was the, another one of our residents involved at the time. Uh, Gail Priestley was the nurse that was involved and Dr. Andy Theodoro was a physician involved. And uh, thank goodness we had Dr. Theodoro, the physician involved, because he really uh, got around, around a lot of the roadblocks that, um, uh, that we had in front of us to conduct this kind of study. He got a lot of the permissions, etc. And he was actually leading our quality and safety effort for the hospital at the time. So he was an ideal person to have involved. And uh, Actually, both Dr. Kopp and Dr. Theodora both wrote letters of support uh, for this award, and I really appreciate them. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Carol Rollins. She's the one who actually nominated for me this award. Um, and I've worked with Dr. Rollins longer than any of those folks I just mentioned. I've worked with her for probably almost all of that 30 years. 
and again, a good colleague and her expertise is in, in nutrition. Uh, she has a background in that area. So again, thank everyone uh, who is involved in this. And, and again, we wish to thank the PHA Foundation for their supporting these awards. Thank you very much.